Hi, my name's Woody. And I'm Martin. And we are part of Team Subsistence, representing the University of Sydney in the 2014 National Instruments Autonomous Robotics Competition. So Ed and I are going to talk about dynamic cell motors. So Ed, what is a dynamic cell motor? So I've got a dynamixer right here, and basically it's a smart servo motor. They have a couple of features which are in addition to your standard uh, either digital or analog servo motor. Mainly various modes of feedback that you can actually read off from a microcontroller. What kind of feedback can you get from this motor? So you can get the velocity, you can also get an accurate measure of the position and various other uh, feedback such as um, the torque which has been output and you can also set alarms. So what is an alarm? So the alarms on the Dynamix or motors allow you to uh, recognize when various faults occur. So things like uh, overheating, uh, overcurrent and uh, going outside of the, the bounds of the, the 300 degree limit on it. Does the dynamic cell um, have a continuous mode or, a, or just a position mode? So another great feature of the dynamic cells is that you can actually configure them into what they call wheel mode as well as joint mode. So joint mode would be your standard servo configuration where you have 300 degrees of, uh, of control rotation. However, as I said, you can put it into this wheel mode where you get continuous rotation. So Ed, how can you connect dynamic cells up? One of the great features of the dynamic cells is that they can be configured in a daisy chain configuration. Uh, this model requires just three wires. That's ground, power, and then a data connection. And you can connect just about as many as you want of them. You can both write to the dynamic cells and read from over this single connection. So now Woody's told you all about what a dynamic cell is. I'll, I'll be telling you how to control a dynamic cell using LabVIEW and also using this USB to dynamic cell dongle. You can find one of these in the link down below. The first step is to find the dynamic cell example VI. So we can go to help, find examples, Type in to the search box dynamic cell. Double click on dynamic cell motor HAIOL. In this LabVIEW project example, click on dynamic cell motor setup. Now select this visa resource name. In, in my computer, it should be COM7. And then what this VI will do is look for the motor that is connect to, connected to the computer and tell us the motor ID. Now run this. So from this VI, we can tell that the current motor ID is 9. And that record this motor ID as we will be using this to create our VI to control the dynamic cell motor. Uh, we can change a few other configuration settings around here and apply new settings if we want but it should be alright for now. And now we can close this VI and create a new VI to control the dynamic cell. So this is a VI I created earlier that will read the motor position and also move the motor according to our desired motor position and desired speed. To find these sub VIs that I used, right click and search for dynamic cell. Double click on dynamic cell motor and we can see all the inbuilt sub VIs that we can use to control dynamic cell motors. To do anything with, with these dynamic cell motors, we'll f always first initialize using the initialize VI and always finish with the closed VI. If we want to configure, for example, in our VI, we're going to use configure angle limits to, to configure the the limits of the angle of rotation of our dynamic cell. Also, we'll be using um, motor operation VIs, namely the move motor and read motor position. Now, all we need to do after we take out these VIs is to connect up controls to the inputs. For the initialized VI, we will connect up the desired bold rate, timeout, connect up motor IDs, the angle, angle limits, and also the errors. Also, 
have an indicator to the position of the read motor position VI and then uh, controls for the goal position and goal speed for the mo move motor VI. After that, go to our front panel. This is what we should have. Click on the Visa Resource drop down. Click on, um, type in your desired goal position and your desired speed to get to that position. And then press run. The, the motor has turned to this position and as we can see we get position feedback on our front panel as well. There's also another thing we can do with this VI. If we change our counterclockwise limit to zero, we can change our mode to continuous rotation. Now if we press play, there we go. Our position as we, as we can see here can, is changing continuously. The dyno cell will rotate to a position of 150. Now we can do continuous rotation. We change the counterclockwise angle limit to zero and press play. And change the speed. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and stay tuned for more of our informative videos.